The Fed is about to issue free digital dollars for every American. But don't be mistaken, that will come with a price. In an attempt to conceal their massive inflation targets, defending the plan would solely provide further support for unemployment households. The Federal Reserve is now unleashing its helicopter money 2.0. However, the creation of digital money may arrive at the expense of the total devastation of the currency, staggering hyperinflation and the forgiveness of the colossal national debt. That's why today we gathered numerous experts' insights that outline the real implications of this measure to the fragile US economy and explain how the shift to a digital currency might allow the institution to surveil every transaction ever made using their app. So stay tuned and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends and subscribe to our channel not to miss the next unfoldings of the US economic collapse. Recently, the Fed has accepted that its favorite stimulus pathway has failed to boost the broader economy. But instead of reviewing its current money printing policy, Fed officials decided to put the blame on how it is intermediated, particularly the way it creates excess reserves that ultimately end at commercial banks, instead tracking its path down to consumer level. That is to say, even though the institution doesn't admit since it introduced QE and NIRP, the Fed has only worsened the situation it has been trying to fix, while continued to expand the biggest asset price bubble in history. Right after the start of the widespread shutdowns and the huge spike in unemployment, the Fed has tried to short-circuit this process, and hand-in-hand hand with the Treasury, it has issued its first round of helicopter money which provided the direct transference of funds to U.S. corporations via PPP loans, and also to end consumers via the emergency $600 weekly unemployment benefits. But the trillion-dollar stimulus relief wore off at an extremely fast pace, even before millions of workers had the chance to file claims to receive some help. Despite the economy increasing needs for a massive liquidity tsunami, the funds created by the Fed and Treasury still never managed to reach those who need them the most, the end consumers. Now, with the alleged goal of reaching consumers who have been traditionally underserved by financial institutions, the Cleveland Fed website has disclosed that Legislation has proposed that each American have an account at the Fed in which digital dollars could be deposited as liabilities of the Federal Reserve Banks, which could be used for emergency payments. Although the measure might look like a form of assistance to the American people, analysts have been warning that this is the perfect opportunity for them to raise surveillance on the public's transactions. The launch of a digital currency would give the agency the possibility to start getting rid of the anonymous physical currency and eventually track every single banknote from its app. All the banking operations ever made and also it would have access to users' private information throughout its duration. At some point, the Fed could also obliterate such digital currency and wipe out people's accounts. But as experts have been pointing out, for the time being, their aim is to successfully disintermediate commercial banks, since it would both offer loans to US consumers and directly deposit funds into their accounts. In that way, the agency would have the power to actually make the entire traditional banking system obsolete. And before you think this is some type of tinfoil theory Fed opposers are trying to propagate in order to discredit the agency, the institution itself admitted its intentions in a recent statement transmitted on their website. Here goes what they said word by word. Other proposals would create a new payment instrument, digital cash, which would be just like the physical currency issued by central banks today, but in a digital form and potentially without the anonymity of physical currency. Depending on how these currencies are designed, central banks could support them without the need for commercial bank involvement via direct issuance into the end user's digital wallets, combined with central bank facilitated transfer and redemption services. 
With that said, their plan to deposit digital dollars to each American essentially bypasses Congress and gives the agency targeted fiscal stimulus capabilities. In that sense, it could trigger a substantial reflationary spike since the marginal price setters for economic goods and services is the lower income segment of the American society. Furthermore, since the Fed already implemented average inflation targeting, the consequent explosion of inflation would be evaluated as insufficient on its own to prompt a change to tighten the institution's monetary policy. In fact, months ago, Zero Hedge has already alerted that even as inflation rages, the Fed would have a semantic loophole to justify why it needs to keep inflation scorching hot. Despite the fact the standard of living in America is steadily collapsing to the benefit of a handful of asset holders. Their outlook of the agency's plan describes that, absent a massive burst of inflation in the coming years which inflates away the hundreds of trillions in federal debt, the debt tsunami that is coming would mean the end to the American way of life as we know it. Now that the institution is in the final stages of a process that will revolutionize the entire fiat monetary system, the creation of digital dollars will not only remove commercial banks as financial intermediaries or enable the generation of a universal basic income by making direct deposits into Americans' digital wallets, but also it will turn Congress and the entire legislative branch redundant while a handful of technocrats quietly assume control of the United States. By contrast, Fed Chair Jerome Powell continues to argue that the only reasons behind the coming digital dollars are related to the prospects of providing faster and cheaper transactions for the population to receive additional emergency benefits while addressing the decline in the use of physical money through the modernization of the payments infrastructure, which would finally reach the end consumers who were previously deprived of broad access to financial institutions. Additionally, as the Fed is not set to sell the narrative of direct transfer of money to the rest of the world and the broader US population, former Fed's Julia Coronado explains that this is supposedly the most efficient from a macroeconomic standpoint in supporting spending and confidence. The fear of unemployment acts as an accelerant in a recession. There is a shock. People are losing their jobs or worry about losing their jobs. They get very risk averse. By getting money to the consumers, you can limit the depth and duration of a recession. Clearly, this short circuit to a broken monetary transmission mechanism is only envisioning to facilitate universal basic income so that it becomes possible to legitimize limitless issuance of helicopter money and an unprecedented overhaul of how money reaches Americans. Of course, it would be too shocking to profess that, essentially, the Fed's true motive is to trigger a runaway inflation that could incite a major response amongst discontented Americans when they find out that the cash made available for free to help them was not a gift from the Fed nor a way to support them during the current recession. But actually, it would end up disrupting their cost of living in very short notice. Even the prominent Double Line has recently published an article admitting that's the case and alerting that the Pandora's box of Fed's digital currency will ignite an inflationary conflagration. Likewise, BOFA, chief investment strategist, has released a piece in which he unveils the truth about digital currencies. Hartnett starts his argumentation by briefly presenting the history of revolutionary monetary policies, noting that in the past 13 years, central banks have cut interest rates 972 times bought $19 trillion of financial assets via QE, introduced NIRP, ZIRP, YCC, TLTROS, which resulted in a near record $16.8 trillion of negatively yielding global bonds. In this table, he lays out the 15 key 
revolutionary events in monetary policy since the Bear Stearns collapse, which asserts that the next frontier for central bank revolution is the use of digital currencies as a conduit for policies such as universal basic income, modern monetary theory, student debt forgiveness, to induce sustained rise in inflation expectations. The strategist, which has been one of the sharpest minds in summarizing trends into an actionable recommendation, highlights one simple tip. Own inflation assets. Moreover, the bet on continued dollar debasement can also be sustained considering his examination have found that the US 5S 30S yield curve now steepest, down 125 BPS since November of 2016. On the other hand, the Chinese renminbi is at two-year highs. Bitcoin is evaluated at $13,000 and gold is the best performing asset class for the first time since 2010. And the kickstart for the promulgation of the Fed's long-awaited plan as he observed, could actually generate real inflation. It could be beneficial for not only avoiding negative rates, but creating a more healthy interest rate market, a more healthy yield curve. In simple terms, the agency's decision to give money to the lower and middle classes, which of course are the ones who need the most and are most likely to spend it, is what is going to create the exorbitant level of inflation the Fed always needed to keep endorsing their reckless policies. To further illustrate the central bank's attempt to unleash a massive hyperinflation across the globe in hopes of dispersing the world's most untenable debt load, we present double-lined fixed income portfolio manager Bill Campbell's assessment that exposes that the temptations of central bank digital currency, also known as CBDC, are not limited to excesses in monetary policy. CBDCs also appear to be an effective mechanism for bypassing the taxation, debt issuance, and spending prerogatives of government to implement a quasi-fiscal policy. Imagine, for example, the ease of enacting modern monetary theory via CBDCs. With CBDCs, the central banks would possess the necessary plumbing to directly deliver a digital currency to individuals' bank accounts ready to be spent via debit cards. The expert quotes Charles I. Plosner's warning in 2012 that says, once a central bank ventures into fiscal policy, it is likely to find itself under increasing pressure from the private sector, financial markets, or the government to use its balance sheet to substitute for other fiscal decisions. Campbell continues by emphasizing that with a flick of the digital switch, CBDCs can enable policymakers to meet or cave into those demands at the risk of igniting an inflation conflagration, abandoning what little still survives of sovereign fiscal discipline and who knows what else. In conclusion, Campbell discloses to hope the leaders of the world's central banks will approach this new financial technology with extreme caution guarding against its overuse or outright abuse. It's hard to be optimistic. Soon our monetary Pandoras will possess their own box full of new powers, perhaps too enticing to resist. But since there's only so much we can expect from authorities, it's better to get prepared to see digital dollars collapsing the paper dollars while prompting a huge hyperinflation and deteriorating even further the American standard of living.